You know, in all the time I've lived here, I think I've been in this room maybe four times. I'm sorry, room, I've been neglecting you. I already can't hear or react to me, it's just a room. Anyway, I love when the mighty fall. And I love when the, the mighty that have it all just come crashing down. And they just, you know, crumble to the ground. And they, they suffer along the way. And they're, they're not getting what they want. And, you know, all this other stuff. Call it sadistic. Call it mean. Whatever, whatever you will. It's just something that, I don't know, I've always been fascinated in, in stuff like that. But anyway, Robert Schuller. Um, perhaps you guys have heard of him. He's a TV televangelist. In fact, I'll put a picture of him on the screen here. Um, he used to host a TV televangelist show called uh, The Hour of Power. It still reruns every now and then. If you've been up late night on a Saturday or a Sunday morning, you're flipping through and you see the infomercials, you'll come across his show at some point. Anyway, um, he broadcasts from the Crystal Cathedral. Um, it's a church that he basically started up in, I think it was like 1955. He's been there for Ever. He basically started this church with his own ministry, and it's 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 grown today to be this big, just you know, conglomerate that's watched all over the world. At one point, it had 20 million people tuning in to see his televangelist show, and he had it all. He had everything, but last year his church went into bankruptcy, had to be sold to the Catholic Archdiocese of Orange County, and they took over everything. And now. The church is just flat out bankrupt. It owes millions of dollars to creditors, and Robert Schuller himself is taking the church to court and basically asking for monies owed to him. And um, we'll get to a few points here in a second because uh, it's arguable as to who exactly is taking them to court, Robert Schuller or his family. Anyway, um, this is something where. <laughs> Once the, once the details started coming out about this, and it's really, it's picking up in the news right now, it's something where I have to say, boy, I, I really have a hard time feeling sorry for any of the parties involved in this. I know people are going to be like, well, you're just a, you're just a non-believer hating on some Christian entity and all this other stuff. Now, now just, 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 just wait a second here, people. I just, I want to know why or how anyone could feel bad for anyone involved in this. Because now through the court documents released, there's a number of variables coming forward, uh, n figures of how much Robert Schuller himself was paid by the church in upwards of $330,000 a year annually he was given for living expenses. Now I gotta tell you, um, I don't quite make that much, but I managed to get by. And I imagine, you know, he's probably not living much better than I am. I mean, $330,000 a year that you're getting from that church. I mean, that's, that's going to be tough. I mean, he probably still lived in the ghetto and all that stuff. But anyways, you, you, you get my sarcasm. And those payments have dried up because, as I said, the church is in bankruptcy now. They're owed millions of dollars to creditors. And when stuff like that happens, you have to start, you know, partitioning where you want your money to go to. And the Archdiocese is like, well, you, you really don't need $330,000. We're going to hold off payments on that. And a matter of fact, we're going to hold off payments to your family because it was also released, and the LA Times even reported this, four members of the Schuller family earned an estimate of $13 million from 1993 to 2010. Thirteen million dollars. The fuck were they doing to earn that money? And I think it was Schuler's daughter was reported to make ten thousand dollars a month as a secretary. <laughs> That's a pretty good secretarial gig. Um, I don't know if any of your parents out there are secretaries or whatever, but let's see, ten thousand dollars a month times twelve months in a year. It's a hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year for being a secretary. So do you get what I'm saying here, people? Basically, through the evidence that's being revealed now, uh, one of the main reasons why this church is bankrupt is because they were payrolling this guy's family. They were living lavish lifestyles. They were financing everything they got through the money they could siphon through the church. And now that it's cut off, they're taking them to court over it. <laughs> I just, I find this whole thing laughable. I find it laughable because they had everything and now it's like, oh, I'm not going to get my millions of dollars anymore. Oh, no, the church is bankrupt. Oh, no. Too bad. It sucks for you. 
oh my god, this is, I just, I, I, I love shit like this. And there's also another thing, um, Robert Schuller, that one of the reasons why he's taken to court is the church, once it got taken control of by the, um, the Catholic Archdiocese, they, um, they started pro profiting by selling a lot of his, um, his works, his, like, you know, uh, DVDs, whatever is, you know, whatever he sells, uh, through the internet. And Robert Schuller, and this is actually, I'll, I'll leave a link in the video description to an article talking about this, uh, his actual defense in court was this. He wouldn't have agreed to the deal he did through the finances of his sold products on the internet if he understood what the internet was. That's literally what his physical defense in court was. That's what he testified as. He wouldn't have agreed to his products being sold on the internet if he understood what the internet was. Now, I know Robert Scholler is a very old man. He's 87 years old now. But here's the thing. Ignorance of not knowing is not an excuse to get back any sort of money that you think is owed to you. So what? The, the church took advantage of the, the capabilities of selling product on the internet. Just because you didn't understand how potentially profitable that would be, that you signed into an agreement that netted more revenue for them than it did yourself, Again, I, I don't know, no, no, I don't know how anyone can feel sorry for any of the parties involved in this. Oh my God, this church had just such a ridiculous following. Like I said, even in the article, it states this show, this televangelist show, this Hour of Power show, had 20 million viewers a week. 20 million viewers a week on television. Had tens of thousands of people going to the church each week. And now this guy and his $330,000 annual living expenses, not to mention he's making profit off of merchandise sold and stuff like that. So, I mean, he's easily a millionaire sometimes over just for a few years worth of work. Um, are we supposed to feel bad that now this, this church is bankrupt? And one of the main reasons why they're bankrupt, bankrupt is that he financed his lavish lifestyle and his family's lavish lifestyle with this money from the church. I, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I'm supposed to feel sorry for you? Jesus Christ, and again, um, going to a point I said earlier, it, it makes you wonder who's really pushing this lawsuit in court for the money owed, because, like I said, uh, Robert Schuller's 87 years old. I mean, you got to wonder if he's just like, well, you know, I, I, you know, I have more than enough money to live the rest of my life off of, or you got to wonder if it's the kids going. Oh, God damn it. We were set for life. We had a cool gig going where we're making millions of dollars. Now it's gone. That's bullshit. <laughs> Again, I don't feel sorry for any of them. Holy shit. Anyway, I just wanted to kind of make a video about this because I'm sure a lot of you guys, you don't even know who Robert Schuller is. Or if you do, you don't probably don't know about this going on in the news. And again, I like I like laughing when the mighty fall, when they come crashing down and since the church is involved, I have no problem laughing at that. So, anyways, um, everyone, have a fantastic day. I hope everyone in the Northeast got some power again. Um, I was lucky enough to not lose my power for a second here, and I don't know why I'm going so off topic here all of a sudden. Anyways, have a fantastic day, everyone.